The Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, visited the Royal Bahrain Naval Force today, accompanied by the Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, Major General His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, and a number of senior Royal Guard officers. His Highness was received by the Force's Commander and a number of senior officers. Sheikh Nasser was briefed on development and preparation programs as well as the military training of the Special Royal Force. He conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa to the officers for their noble sacrifices while fighting alongside the forces of the Arab coalition to support legitimacy in Yemen, led by the Saudi armed forces. He highlighted the appreciation of the Arab coalition forces led by Saudi Arabia for the BDF officers, stating that this appreciation is a result of their sincere efforts and their advanced military skills in Yemen. His Highness hailed their military achievements, adding that the Royal Naval Force spares no effort in defending the kingdom and supporting brotherly nations. Under the chairmanship of the Education Minister and the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Majid bin Ali al Nuemi, the University of Bahrain's Board of Directors held its 13th regular session today. Present were the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Homeidin, the President of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Riyad Hamza, the Ministry of Education's Under Secretary for Resources and Services, Dr. Mohammed Mubarak Juma, Assistant Secretary. General for Assessment and Accreditation at the General Secretariat of the Council of Education, Dr. Mona Al Balushi, Sheikha Tifla bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, and Dr. Mansour Mohammed Al Sarhan. The Minister expressed thanks to the WISE leadership for its support of the University. The University President briefed the Council on the procedures for receiving new students, noting that the campus is adopting an expansive approach by offering postgraduate programs. The Council congratulated the University for acquiring the International Academic Accreditation Certificate from the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology for the Information Technology and Computer Science programs at the College of Information Technology. The Council reviewed a paper submitted by the Labour Minister with proposals for academic research concerning the Ministry's needs. The Council also approved a memo of understanding between the University of Bahrain and the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali al Rumehi received 60 students who participated in the professional media training program that was organised by the Ministry in cooperation with Tam Keen at the production studio of the Ministry of Information. The Minister affirmed the Ministry's keenness to organise more training programmes and workshops in order to develop skilled Bahraini cadres that move the media labour market forward and enhance the advancement of the Kingdom under the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. Al Romehi expressed his admiration for the youth's outstanding television production projects, which demonstrated how much the participants benefited from the programme. He expressed confidence in Bahraini youth and praised the vision of His Majesty the King to focus on the youth sector in order to support and encourage them to take responsibility in various fields, especially in areas involving production, politics, and economics. The Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to Tam Keen for funding this programme and for the unique opportunities it provides to Bahrainis while meeting labour market requirements for development. The Sheikh Khalid Theatre Festival continues its 18-day long run with inspiring performances and amazing Bahraini talents. Let's find out more now from Yasmin. The third edition of the Khalid bin Hamad Theatre's festival continues artistic performances where talent meets ambition. A winner is chosen in a series of performances that follow each day, which drives talented Bahraini youth to strive to prosper in their future artistic life. Cliché is going to be a very unique kind of theatrical production. Um, it combines all kinds of theatrical schools 
in one theatrical production and I am very proud to be a part of this team as I've been working with very, very professional actors who have a great understanding of their bodies, of their voices, of their capabilities. And uh, this festival in specific shows us Bahrainis that we have support from from His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and from Bahrain as a whole and it helps us and it encourages us to want to come to, to want to become better at what we do and it also encourages us to provide more and more. This is the second time I'm participating in this uh, theater festival. I'm very honored to have His Highness Sheikh uh, Khalid bin Hamad to host this event because we don't have such events in Bahrain for theater. So it's uh, for me as an actress, and I'm sure for all actors in Bahrain, they're, they're really glad. It's not just about getting like the awards, it's about the festival itself. So we're really thankful. We hope that we get more of these kind of interest in theater in Bahrain, and hopefully you'll enjoy our show. The festival slogan, Planting a Smile, reflects the goals of the festival by organizing an event that aims to draw a smile and spread unity and happiness among the youth of Bahrain, especially in the cultural and arts field. Uh, this festival it's uh, very important for us like uh, you know uh, w when we work on a, on a theater like uh, in Bahrain uh, we need this talent uh, talent is uh, coming for us uh, we uh, we need to uh, to discover uh, a new generation discover here uh, like uh, new writers and new actors a new actress and new directors uh, as a lady, there's three ladies uh, doing uh, theater as a director. Uh, this is, uh, we are very proud for them. Twelve plays will be staged during the 18-day long festival, which will conclude on October 21st. And with only a few days away from the closing, more than 750 artists continue to exceed expectations. The festival is a platform that brings the talented youth of Bahrain closer to achieving their dreams. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. A Council of Representatives delegation held a number of meetings in Washington, D.C. in line with a visit organized by the Commercial Law Development Program affiliated to the Office of the United States Department of Commerce. Earlier, Member of Parliament Isa al Kohiji briefed us on the delegation's participation in Washington. The aim of this visit is to uh, exchange practices and experiences on the legislative drafting process between us and our American counterparts. It also will focus on institutional building and resource development towards commercial legislative reform. Uh, this is basically, we will have uh, a lot more experience once the delegation comes back, having seen how our counterparts over here work. This will benefit Bahrain and that the, the delegation will go back with an improved technical capa uh, capacity of legislative drafting and that will enhance Bahrain's parliamentarian council to expand its knowledge of the infrastructure and uh, commercial laws that are available over here. So uh, we've got a lot of laws that are coming in from the government. We've got uh, laws coming in regarding uh, commercial laws and uh, tax laws that are coming. So these are basically uh, what we have to be ready for. Uh, tax law, the VAT law, uh, which is being uh, talked in the government, that will come to the council. The bankruptcy law, that will be coming to the council. So uh, the team over here will be much more aware of how it has been implemented in other countries and America being one of the leading uh, countries that have bankruptcy laws. I think this will benefit Bahrain a lot, having all the legal advisors being over here, having a look at how the laws are being drafted and how it can help them when they go back to Bahrain. So it is a very positive uh, course or uh, the delegation has come to a course and uh, they're all very positive and learning a lot over here.
As delegates were voting for a third time this week, protesters gathered outside UNESCO headquarters in Paris to express opposition against Qatar's candidacy for the cultural body. Protesters said Qatar was trying to buy votes in the disputed election. French media outlets reported prior to the elections that Qatar has made generous financial offers, bribing some delegates to vote for their candidate. According to these reports, Qatar received at least 10 UNESCO delegates a fortnight ago, hosting and gifting them with generous presence. Other media reports published two days ago said Doha bribed some delegates while meeting them in a restaurant close to UNESCO headquarters in Paris. These delegates include two from an Arab country and others from African and Latin American nations. After three days of a secret ballot that could run until Friday, the Qatari candidate was even with the French, with 18 votes each, followed by Egyptian hopeful Moshira Khatab with 13 votes, the Chinese candidate with five votes, and Lebanon's candidate with four votes. We are here in opposition to the UNESCO Qatari candidacy. We say that when there is a country, a candidate over which there are doubts, his state is accused of terrorism. We can't give him the UNESCO leadership and presidency. UNESCO is hope, it's heritage, it's about art, it's about life, it's about living together. I think that today is a crucial moment to say no to the Qatari taking hold of UNESCO. You can't buy votes with money. UNESCO is here mainly for African countries and I think that an African candidate who has been in cultural affairs for a long time deserves to win. I think that the former French culture minister Audrey Azoulay deserves to win too, but the Qatari candidate has nothing to do here.